MPs are, are something I've been working on a long time. It's only recently with the Novik project that we really started working on the reading organic aspect of it. And uh, just as by way of introduction, SNAPPIES, um, not all people know what SNAPPIES are. And this is a problem that Calvin Langworn faced many years ago when he was reading, first developing SNAPPIES. He would give people SNAPPIES where you're, you know, you're supposed to eat the whole pod. And, uh, he would have people come back and tell him that they were really great, but they were sure hard to shell. <laughs> so um, I, I like to throw this little chart up here. So it, shows you um, just what the, how different types of peas differ from one another. You know, your dry pea or field pea is going to have brown seed. There's fiber in the pod wall. The walls are thin. It has suture strings. Here's an example of the suture string at the bottom. Um, garden peas are where the, the seeds eaten at high moisture generally have wrinkled seed. This trait is associated with um, blocks uh, starch by the synthesis, so you accumulate sugars and it's much sweeter. Um, there are a few early round types, but for the most part they're wrinkled. Uh, again, they have high fiber pod walls, the pod wall thickness is thin, and they uh, also have suture streaks. Now a snow pea is usually brown seed, and that's because when you eat a snow pea, it's, it's a very small pea, a uh, small pod, and the, Peas inside are not well developed. Sugar really doesn't matter. Uh, they lack pot fiber. This is different from the other types. But the walls are still thin, and they generally have strings. Snap peas are one more progression. Usually they have wrinkled seed. They lack the pot fiber. They have another gene that gives them this thick pot wall. And it's the analog of a snap pea. And then they may or may not have suture strings. The um, suture string uh, trait in peas is a problem. The trait is associated with a lot of, uh, of um, uh, deleterious growth and, uh, and in all aspects of growth, including uh, pollen tube growth. Uh, so it's um, it's been very hard to develop types that have that are stringless, that are really robust. And, will do well in organic system. I think I'll we'll be able to see some data in a minute that shows this. Um, well, the seed types also in these types, when I'm talking about round seed, this is what it looks like. Um, this is uh, typical wrinkled seed. And then uh, stringless is very interesting. The seed are uh, they're not kind of in between round and wrinkled. Um, but they still have the traits that are associated with wrinkled seed um, in terms of germination. And I'll get into that a little more in a minute. Now the breeding objective in snappies has been a vigorous edible pollen type that produces in the warmer summer months. And when we started this project, we were focused, we were thinking we were going to focus on stringless types. I think we broadened our vision a little bit to include stringy types because right now it's it's really hard to make progress in an organic system with stringless types. Some of the key traits uh, for selection include um, phase to germination and flowering, uh, yield, aphid damage, a continued pod set during the heat of the summer, various diseases like peonation, powdery mildew, fusarium wilt, flavor, and quality. Here's an example of some of the problems you run into with stringless peas. This is Two plots. This one is a stringless type. And do you see any bees in that, in that plot? This is a, and this is a stringy one. That the stringless types are very weak when it comes to germination. Um, that's, that's something we haven't been able to entirely overcome. Here's a couple of pictures of some of the diseases we're dealing with. Powdery mildew um, usually comes in late in the season. Fusarium mills, which can attack earlier late and pretty well wipe out, wipe out the crop. And then finally, uh, peonation mosaic virus. This is primarily a Pacific Northwest problem. Um, you can see the distortion and discoloration on the pots. 
So the, uh, these particular, we have a couple of advanced lines in this program that I think we'll be ready to write at the release. This file data now. And um, these come out of a cross with a variety called Manoa Sea, which is a Hawaiian uh, uh, snow pea. Um, very, uh, has excellent powdery mildew resistance, but was, is very poor in, in virus resistance. Crossed to a couple different uh, OSU lines. One was Oregon Sugar Pot 2, a, a classic um, snow pea, and then a breeding line, a snap pea breeding line called S706. And uh, in early generations, we were selecting for heat tolerance, powdery mildew resistance, virus resistance. And then in 2009, we began trialing these in organic production systems. And these are the three um, lines that we've been looking at are these numbered lines, 1423, 1430, 1431. 1431 is the snow peak in that group. Um, so in, in 2010, 2011, they've been um, trialed in um, the variety trials with uh, six other commercial varieties. And uh, that's generated the data on their performance. Here, for example, is performance on germination. Um, notice here, these three are stringless types. You see what the germination levels are compared to the other. The highest in here are Oregon Sugar Pod 2 and the S1431. And these are round seeded types. And round seeded types have a, a germination advantage over wrinkled seeded types. You can see um, Cascadia, 12%. I think here we might have had a problem with the seed lot. But then the other wrinkled seeded snap peas are in the 30 to 40% range. So this trial was fairly severe in terms of the germination. Sugar snap, or super sugar snap down here had about 34% germination. The yield on these uh, peas has been uh, particularly experimentalized. It's been excellent. Um, Cascadia is in here as a, a, a snap pea check, a stringy snap pea check, and then Oregon Sugar Pot 2, the second bar, is the snow pea. The uh, experimental snow pea wine is the S1431 um, with uh, about a third again yield advantage over Oregon Sugar Pot 2. And then the two snap peas are lower yielding, but um, still almost double of the, the Cascadia in this particular row. And the, 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 the uh, stringless snap peas are very low. Uh, the second set of bars represents the unmarketable weight. The, the first set of bars are marketable. And generally, these are very small numbers on those. Some pictures of the, um, the varieties. Uh, just I'll show you a couple of the experiments. S fourteen thirty one. It's like a typical snap pea line. Um, these tend to be taller vines. They, they're very good at trellising, self trellising, and um, uh, and we, we're finding uh, multiple picks this year. I think we picked six times on, on these types. Where with uh, some of the shorter more determinant types, it would be uh, uh, two or three picks during the season. Likewise, here's 1431. These ponds are actually a little bit larger than something like an Oregon Sugar Pod 2. I, I always think larger is better. Um, and there's the growth habit on, on these. Again, a good self trellis are fairly tall, robust line. Now, I'll just say a little bit about the, the Cornell program, Michael Missouri. Is also working on uh, snap peas. Uh, or we're joined in working on snap peas. And this program uh, is, is, is newer. He's been um, starting it by using a backcross back cross inbred approach to widen the genetic base for peas and also by screening in New York in the uh, warmer times of the year finding material that, that has good you know, heat tolerance, drought tolerance, and um, resistance to, to the diseases needed in that region, some of which are the same as in the West as well. So 
the diseases are things like powdery mildew, fusarium, root rot, and ascotitis blight. Um, and he's worked, he's created three populations to uh, do this um, based on input originally from um, market chefs and growers. And um, the, uh, the program is, uh, okay, one of the things about breeding, and the program is focused on stringless types, and one of the things about breeding stringless types is you need a particular crossing speed to maximize the number of um, line, stringless lines that you have to work. If you just make a cross between a stringy type and a stringless type, produce the F1, self of that and produce the F2, you're going to find that you only have like 10% of the plants there will carry the stringless gene. And very low levels, whereas you'd expect 25% to carry the stringless gene. Um, that's because the stringless gene pollen tube is not, pollen is not competitive with the stringy, the pollen carrying the stringy gene. So, um, you, uh, you see these um, the skewed segregation ratios with this. So the way to get around this is to use a back cross system. You make a, a cross between your stringy and stringless type. It doesn't matter which one is the female parent. But in the next generation, you take your F1 and use that as the female. And you cross it back to your stringless parent. And so then your back cross one, F1, will be half Heterozygous for the stringy trait, they'll be stringy, the phenotype will be stringy, but they will carry the stringless gene in the heterozygous state. And then the other half of that population will be stringless. And that gives you way more, uh, way higher numbers to look at uh, when you, you're doing your breeding selection. A lot of those plants will be very weak, so you have to select, because of the stringless trait, you will have to select for uh, bigger robustness in that material. So you want as many of them as you can look want as many of them. Okay. Michael's, um, plant, Michael's um, plant has about 900 plants. You hope that he gets about 300 stringless, uh, single plants to work with it. So that's, um, this so the type of selection we will be done this season. And then there's a second set of populations being created to incorporate uh, uh, newly identified uh, pea material. So that program will, the, the varieties, the fruits of that program will be coming out after Nordic is, is over. Um, but um, that, I think, is where we are with the peak.